In this video I'll be building a pergola or pergola and here I am at a local timber merchant where I'm making some cuts so that I can fit this timber into my car. This is tannalized or pressure treated softwood and it's rough sawn, in other words it's not planed so it has a rough surface, but this is all that I could get locally at the time. PAR or planed all round would have been better, but this will be fine. So I've got some 6x2 or 150x47mm, some 4x2 or 100x47 and some 4x4 posts or 100x100mm. And I get it carried around to the back of our bungalow. I stacked it up with some spaces in between to help airflow around it and there it sat for a couple of months drying out while I was working on installing the patio which was covered in a previous video until I was finally ready to get started. So I installed these post holders in a previous video and one of the concerns I have is water getting inside and the timber posts soaking that moisture up. I might be overthinking this and I don't think it's going to be a major issue because after all the timber takes up most of the space around this post holder. Plus obviously there's going to be a roof over the top of the pergola. But I think moisture could potentially still soak into the timber and drip out from the bottom or it might soak through the mortar that's surrounding the post holder and come in through these holes on the side walls. The post holders do have drainage holes in the bottom but obviously they're hard up against concrete so I'm just going to drill out some of that concrete which will hopefully give any moisture that does get down there a place to go. I'm also going to sit the timber on some of these glazing packers just to get the timber off the bottom of the holders. Again, not sure this is necessary, but it seemed like a good idea to me. I was about to put the first post in when I realized it'd be good to measure the depth of the holder and mark this onto the end of the post so that I could see when it was fully seated into the holder. And then I can hit it in place with the mallet. And it wasn't sitting as plumb as I'd have liked, but it seemed like there was enough movement or flex to pull it into plumb, so it should be fine. Then I got the other post in. And I marked up the height I wanted the front of the pergola to be from the floor, which was about 2.3 meters for me. And I clamped on a piece of timber that I can use to temporarily hold up one side of what will be the front beam. I got it clamped in place and then I can pop a spirit level on top and make some adjustments to get it sitting level. And once I was happy, I marked up the position of the beam onto both posts and then I can get it taken down. I then needed to get the post out of the holder, which was a little tricky as it fits pretty snug, but wobbling it from side to side helped to get it out. And I'm going to be cutting a half lap joint so the beam sits on the post. And after deciding what depth I wanted to cut, I set my circular saw blade to that depth and then made a series of cross cuts. And then I need to cut the excess off the end of the posts. I can then start removing all the waste and cleaning up the surface with a chisel. I'm going to be treating all my cuts with some wood preservative as even though this wood is pressure treated, that treatment doesn't penetrate into the middle of the timber. So this should help to protect the newly exposed timber from things like rot and wood boring insects. Then it was the same again for the second post. And I can get a coat of paint on the timber which is also going to help protect it from moisture. I'm not a big fan of how pressure treated wood looks so paint will help make the pergola look a bit more modern. I can then get the posts installed again for the final time. And I can get the beam on top and check it's sitting level and it looked perfect. So I can now decide where I want my fixings, drill pilot holes and then fix it in place with some coach screws. These screws are 6mm thick and 90mm long. The other end wasn't quite sitting square as you can see here so I used some F clamps to pull it into square and then I can fix that in place too. 
At the moment the beam is overhanging the post more than is necessary on both sides but I can cut that excess away later. Here I've got a 4x2 and this is going to be my wall plate and I'm going to be using some of these heavy duty wall anchors to hold the wall plate to the wall. The roof is going to need to have a slight pitch to it because later I'm going to be adding some roof sheets on top and I want the rain to run off away from the house so my wall plate needs to sit higher than my front beam. So I rest it onto a couple of bits of timber and then I can use my SDS drill to drill a 12mm hole into the brick. I remove as much dust as possible using a vacuum and then I can hit the anchor in place. And tightening the nut on the end locks the anchor in place, securing it to the brick really solidly. I really would have liked to paint the wall plate before installing it to the wall but I'd run out of paint at this point. I can then use the level again to get it sitting level and then add another wall anchor to the other end and for now these two fixings will hold it in place but I'll add more later. At this point I don't know what the roof pitch is, I just did it by eye based on what looked right to me but I'll find out the exact pitch later on. Before I install my rafters I'm just sighting down the length of each one just to make sure they're good and straight. This one seems to be perfectly straight on both edges, there's a very slight camber to it this way and for those timbers where there is a camber I'm going to place those so that the arch is upwards and that way over time when they sag they should straighten out. Here I'm offering up a piece of timber on top so that I can get a reference for what angle I need to cut the end of the rafters to. I'm using my bevel gauge to take a reference for the angle and then I can mark that onto the end of one of the rafters and cut along the line. Here I'm taking a measurement for the first rafter and then I can mark the angle to the other end and get that cut too. And because as I mentioned earlier my post isn't quite plumb, I cut this about 12mm short to help pull it in. So I've made my first mistake and some of you might already know what I've done wrong. So you'll see I've got the first joist offered up in place and if you look closely at this side you'll see that my angle is off and that's because when I offered up the piece of timber to mark up the angle I forgot that this end was sitting on a 4x2 rather than a 6x2. In other words when I offered up this piece of timber what I should have done was to lift this end by another 2 inches. Fortunately though I have one spare joist so I'll need to recut this. A few days passed and it was time to get back to the project. So I went and got another tin of paint so that I could paint the wall plate and also all of the rafters that are over here. The angles aren't cut on these yet, I've only got the angles cut on this first one which I'm going to install now. I'm going to be using joist hangers for the rafters to make sure they're installed nice and strong. For the end rafters though I decided to bend one of the hangers using my vise and some wax with a mallet and it'll be clear why I'm doing this shortly. It's worth pointing out though that you can get hangers with concealed fixings which would have worked just as well but I'd already bought these hangers so I'm going to use them. So here I'm offering up my first rafter having now cut the correct angle to both ends. And I got one side held in place with a clamp so that I could then use my framing square to get it sitting square to the wall plate and I then made a pencil mark right where the hanger would need to be installed. Then I marked up a line so that I can cut away the excess which I did with a circular saw and then a multi-tool just to finish off the cut. And again, preserver and paint for the cut ends. I bought some of these 30mm long, sheridized twist nails for the hangers, which look like this, and these are the recommended nails for the job, and that's what I'm using here to secure the hanger to the wall plate. However, as I'm going to be fixing part of this first hanger to the end grain of the wall plate, I wanted to use longer nails there to get a better hold, and I had some of these galvanised 2 inch nails in the shed. These definitely aren't the best nails for the job, but I'm pretty confident these will do the job just fine, and it saved me going out and buying something else. I was a bit hesitant about nailing into the end grain because it won't be as strong, and also I thought it might split the wood, but actually they went in really nicely and so I stopped worrying about it. The other end of the rafter was secured to the post using a couple of coach screws again, but this time I'm using longer 120mm screws. And then I can get the rest of the twist nails installed to the hangers to lock the rafter in place. And with the first rafter installed I can then cut away the excess from the front beam.
I wanted to wait for the delivery of my roof sheets before installing the rest of the rafters just to check that they measured true to what I had ordered and it was a good job I did because these 600mm wide sheets actually measured about 604mm and I wanted to minimise making cuts to these sheets. So I carefully measured and marked up my rafter spacings based on the actual measurement of the sheets but I'll talk more about that in a future video when it comes to installing them. For now though I can get the rest of the rafters cut and I decided to take them to the workshop just because it was quicker to use the mitre saw for this. I can set the angle based on my bevel gauge which by the way was 5 degrees so that means the pitch of my roof is approximately 1 in 12. Then I can get the rest of the hangers installed and because it's recommended to get them nice and tight to the timber, my method for this was to first install the nails to one side of the hanger, to both the wall plate and the inside of the front beam. Then I could drop the rafter in place. Then I got the nails installed into the rafter to pinch the hanger together tight to the rafter. And then I secured the other side of the hanger to the inside of the beam and wall plate. I don't know if this is how the pros do it, but it worked for me. And it was the same process again and again to get the rest of the rafters installed. In between each rafter I also added an additional wall anchor through the wall plate and into the brick. And here's the last rafter going in. Here I'm cutting the ends of a couple of leftover bits of 4x2 at a 45 degree angle using the circular saw and I'll use these as corner braces which will help to remove any racking of the structure from side to side and really help make it nice and rigid. So I can just offer it up to where it needs to be and secure it with two carriage bolts, one on each end. And finally I can get a second coat of paint onto all of the timber. So that's the pergola done and to be honest there are several things I would do differently if I were to do this project again. But as this video is already quite long I'm going to put that in a separate video wrapped up with all of the job costs. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel plus get early access to my videos, exclusive videos like the ones on screen now, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos, you'll find links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.